Simon, get me a drink. Sure thing. Say, Joe, you look like a birdie with a story to tell. <laughs> sure do, stranger. A tale and a half about a group of young men in short trousers with an urge to dominate. Say, what kind of story is this? That's the kind of story you won't forget in a hurry, friend. About possibly the greatest football team ever to crawl the face of this lousy planet. I remember it all so well. I think they're just celebrating Milan's success. Rijkaard to Hullet. Here's Donadoni. Rijkaard. Albertini. That's a good strike. Oh, and a fabulous goal. And that goal meant they were champions for the second year in a row. Who? Oh, you mean... Yep, uh... Milan. They'd won the league in 92 and 93, and now the big question was, could they do it again in 94? Do you want to know what happened? Sure thing. Well? Well, this is what happened. Milan, firm favourites to win Lo Scudetto for the third season in a row. But as the 93-94 season dawned, the champions had problems. Despite securing the services of Danish midfielder Brian Laudrup and Romanian striker Florin Raduceu from relegated Fiorentina and Brescia, the heart of one of Serie A's greatest ever side. The dreadlocked midfield duo had moved on, Rijkaard to Ajax, Hullet to Sampdoria, while Marco van Basten was still sidelined by the injury which had kept him out of action for most of 92-93. Milan were also without new signing Christian Panucci, injured in pre-season training. And the world's most expensive player, Gianluigi Lentini, terribly injured in a car crash, which nearly cost the winger his life. Suddenly, Milan didn't look quite such a formidable proposition. Meanwhile, their main rivals in Serie A looked stronger than ever. Inter, for example, had gone Dutch, spending some £10 million on midfielder Wim Jok and striker Dennis Bergkamp. Palmer, backed by the billions of lira supplied by club sponsors Parmalat, had invested heavily in a midfield duo from Napoli, hard man Massimo Crippa, and a player once labelled the new Maradona, Gianfranco Zola. Juventus had been unusually quiet in the transfer market, but the form shown in pre-season promised great things from 93's UEFA Cup winners. Meanwhile, down in Rome, Lazio had gone for broke, spending the best part of £15 million on new talent. In defence, keeper Luca Marcagiani and fullback Paolo Negro. In the midfield, Fabrizio Di Mauro. And up front, the national team's first choice target man, Gigi Casiraghi. However, Lazio's preparations had been dented by an injury to their top striker, Beppe Signori, and also by yet more doubts about the fitness of one Paul Gascoigne. And finally, Sampdoria. Not only had they poached Rude Hullet from Milan, they'd also signed England's David Platt and Italian international Alberigo Ivani. On the opening day, there was an immediate return on their investment. Run out by Bia, but to no effect. And here's Hullet. Gloria skill by Hullet. And it's gone in. Well, the whistle has gone, and they're celebrating the goal. I thought for the moment he'd seen an infringement, but David Platt has scored. Well, everybody seemed motionless there, and Sampdoria celebrate the goal on 32 minutes. That's uh, fantastic play from Hulit. Uh, we can see, uh, I think it's Francini facing up to him, but dives in. He shouldn't dive in on Hulit there. And look at his vision, look. Just lifting the ball over the top. 
And there's our own David Platt with a fabulous header down onto the floor and inside the near post. Giving Tagliatella no chance whatsoever. You know, he's got him in a good place here. Hulit's not going anywhere, but he, he dives in and makes Hulit's mind up. No need for it. He's got to stand on his feet. That's a good ball to the back post. Gambro. Digny away from the challenge of Lombardo. That one it back though. Now Lombardo. And Hulit. And it's a second goal. For Sampdoria and Napoli in disarray there by the thrusting nature of that attack. Yes, just ripped apart, Peter, and who else was going to score that but Rude Hulip. I actually thought Lombardo looked suspiciously offside when receiving the ball, but he got his head up very early. Nice ball into Hulip, and again, he hit the target, but hit it very hard. Here's the ball going through from Jugovic. I thought Lombardo may have been slightly offside. The ball comes in, got his head up very well to pick Hulip out, and there he goes, he strikes it on goal. And uh, old Tagliatella didn't really have much chance in the goal. There it is, hitting the target again. A lot of pace on the ball, and it just flies in off his body. Not surprisingly, the, the pace has died down now. It's very, very warm. And Yuka's in trouble, and it has to be a goal. Well, Bresciani could hardly miss from there. And, well, he's thrown Napoli a, a late lifeline. Despite that late hiccup, an impressive performance from Sampdoria. Elsewhere on opening day, there were few shocks of the other title hopefuls. Only Lazio dropped a point. Inter, Parma, Juventus and Milan all winning by single goal margins. However, over the next few months, a disturbing trend developed. Milan weren't always in inspiring form, but they kept on winning. Meanwhile, their rivals were occasionally brilliant. Occasionally disastrous. And when they weren't losing to lowly opposition, they were dropping points to one another. Scala, the coach of Parma, who's done such a marvellous job in their three years since they've come up from Serie B. It's Mancini with the free kick then for Sampdoria and towards Lombardo! <laughs> Apolloni under threat from Rudhulit. Showing he's quite happy to work hard on his team's behalf. They're asking him this week if he feels he's the leader of the team. He says, well, if I can bring the experience I had and the success I had from Milan to Sampdoria, that's my aim for the season. Certainly has done so far. Excellent start to the campaign by Sampdoria. And also by Parma. This is Asprilia. And the goal! So, eight weeks in and Milan were top, the only unbeaten side in Serie A. But they had a tough fortnight coming up with Juventus and Samp on consecutive weekends. First up, Juve at the San Siro. Things when Roberto Baggio went down in the box. A penalty, and despite Baresi's protest, the replay suggests it was the correct decision. Banjo converted, and Milan were reeling. Were they about to suffer their first defeat? No such luck.
A rare header there for Dimitra Albertini and a draw for Milan. Still, a point dropped and in Turin, meanwhile, Ruud Hullet was firing off a warning to his former employers. Now, Ozio, Sergio, made his advanced run. Now, can he get a cross in from here? Did really well then, Sergio, and this time Salenzi has scored. Mancini, well, it was in the middle. Oh, a dreadful clearance and a goal. Spacked in by Sacchetti. Back header by Platt. And he needs to hoist it for his Lombardo. Just got away then from Busi. And the header flashes into the goal. Rob Rudhulic and Sampdoria for being a goal down have turned it round now. The 2 1 up. Really good finish then by Rudhulic. Mancini leaving this one for Ivani. Yeah, I'll put Henry's left foot here. Plenty of the space. Hope to get someone like Gullet. There is Hullet. Arrowing down the header. Oh, what a goal from Rude Hullet. His second of the game. And Sampdoria lead by three goals to one. An awesome header that by Hullet. Poggi, a young striker of much potential. They won't have too long to uh, show that potential in this game Aguilera taking the free kick and driven in and Poggi well I spoke too soon well uh, that must have been his first touch it's too late to save the game but a dramatic finale as Carlo Poggi with his one and only touch brings it back to 3-2 Seven days later and the most eagerly anticipated game of the season so far. White by Simone. On a dirty. Cross it towards Laundrop. And Albertini! Milan ahead. Albertini who scored last week against... With just coming up to 11 minutes gone. It's Sampdoria nil, Milan won. Yeah, great play from Milan. Patiently kept the ball at the back, had Hullet doing doggies in between Baresi and Costa Court, and then Baresi played a real good ball forward. They got it down the left, good cross in. Laudrup did well to get in there and it broke to Albertini, and he scored a couple of them this season already. Platt. White to Lombardo. She's lost it. Mancini! Tremendous save by Elpo. Oh, fabulous stop. That's an absolutely brilliant save. Mancini didn't waste time with that. Hit it first time, flying in the corner, and fingertip save from Yelpo. The act of art. Little flick on by Platt. Oh, it's Sacchetti off the post! A shot goal from him last week, and he was nearly there again. Well, they've encouraged him to get forward at every opportunity. And his reward was very nearly an equaliser. Simone. Maldini. Generally regarded as the best left-back in the world. Here's Donadoni. And away from Sacchetti. Louder up. Oh! Superb finish by Michael Lauda. I thought he lost his chance there. But he coolly steered it into the corner and Milan take a 2-0 lead. Yes, Peter, we're talking about the width. Again, Donadoni's got the ball down the left. He's taken Sacchetti out of the game. Real good cross. Broken to Laudrup. His control lets him down first of all, but he didn't make any mistake with his finish. He sent well, you go the wrong way. Still very much in control of this game, Milan. The champions going for a third successive title and unbeaten so far in Serie A this season. Lombardo. Turned neatly. Up by Vierkevaud. Milan streaming out. No flag. Here's Hullet. Good tackle, though, by Laura. Still Hullet. The strength took him on. And the header has gone in! It's 
squeeze in the corner. week really Sat Doria are back in the game well you can never speak too soon can you another break loud up managed to get or uh, Hullet managed to get the ball on the left good ball in the first time really they've got men in the box good cross in Katanets has flicked it in the far corner that's too far for Hullet Platt back in again then Mancini in goes David Platt still Platt down goes Mancini and he's given it. He's given the penalty. Twenty minutes to go, and Sampdoria have got a penalty for the shove. If it was a shove on Mancini, Liam. Well, I'd like to see it again, Peter. I really don't know. These Italians are so, so very good at going, going over the slightest touch, and they're down. Uh, I think Costa Corte did have hold of his arm, but Matt. Uh, Mancini didn't need too much uh, coaxing there. He was down like a light. Rama in the Luigi Ferrari Stadium. Yelpo in his first league game for Milan. Facing now Roberto Mancini, the captain of Sampdoria. He's been successful with one penalty kick so far this season in the league. How is he going to fare this time? Here's Mancini's kick. It's there. It's 2-2. Sampdoria are back on level terms. Manini with Lombardo. That was careless, picked up by Boban. And he spotted Loud up away to his right. This is Loud up now. Past Ivani rather easily. And the header from Massaro just over the bar. Good build up then by Milan. Yes, they've got Ivani now, of course, Sampdoria playing left back. And Laudrup really took him uh, out of the game there. I don't think it was ever going to trouble the header, it was ever going to trouble Pagliuca. But Sampdoria just dropped the pace a little and Milan have come back into it. You wouldn't know which way this was going to go. Ivani's long ball headed on by Hullet. Maccini. Delicately through. Here's Hullet! Oh! Cracking goal! And Sampdoria! transformation in this game well that's what we talked about Peter we said Mancini could make the passes and he's picked Hullard out splendidly the linesman didn't flag Milan have paid the penalty again this offside game great ball by Mancini and what a finish by Hullard we've seen him do that so many times smash that ball into the far corner Milan beaten, they were happy and perhaps with good reason. Look again at the Sampdoria goals. Catalan got the first from Hullet's cross, but it's his play should have stopped for offside a good 10 seconds earlier. Then the equaliser and Alessandro Costa Curta brings down Roberto Mancini for the penalty. Or does he? And then there's the winner. Nothing wrong with Hullet's finish, but what about Mancini's control? Handball? Milan certainly thought so. Like it or not, and they didn't, Milan were off the top of the table for the first time since September 1991. Sam's reward for their famous victory was a share of the lead with Juventus. Fitting tribute this to club president Paolo Mantovani, a man loved by players and fans alike, who had passed away just a couple of weeks before. Seven days after the Milan game, those Sam were stumbling again, beaten at home by Cagliari. Elsewhere, Sam's top of the table rivals met each other. Donadoni, as usual, will take the kick for Milan. Bounder up on the post. Benucci's making his way up as well. Also watch out for Maldini if he gets in there. And it's Benucci!
Milan take the lead from Polici's header. And well, what a moment for this young man. Bogomi. Yeah, that took a bit of bounce as he kicked that one, I think. So yeah, it's, yeah, it's cutting up a bit, isn't it? Yeah, it is cutting up a little bit. But that's not Bergami's strong point anyway, feeling the old passing of the ball. He's an excellent defender. But, uh, he normally elects just to knock it off nice and simple. Napan looking again. He could be in. It's there. It's two to Milan. Papan strikes. Here's Vimyok. Too long for Fontelain, but he's gone through, and the tackle was a clean one. Oh, he's given a penalty, I think, Peter. Bergkamp is going to take the kick. And scores! They've got one back. Zorato. Oh, can he just unlock that Juventus defence? Metricano now, helping the ball through, and that's going to be a free kick for the foul on Kripa by Dino Baggio. Plenty of amateur referees out there. It still hasn't retreated. Fully 10 yards, but Palmer will take the free kick. And they score! Zola's on target! My goodness! It could well be the winning goal! Here's Aspria now. Tumbles over Cola, and it's a penalty! Well, what a curious end to this game. For 80 minutes, Juventus denied Palmer. Then Zola strikes in a free kick. And now Jurgen Kohler, who's had a torrid evening, trying to keep Aspria quiet, trips him at the vital moment. And Palmer have a penalty. Can Brolin score? Yes, he can. And Palmer will head back towards the top of Serie A tonight. Milan and Parma now sharing top spot. Juve, Samp and Inter in close attendance. Towards the end of November now and a brief window in the transfer market which saw three more big names. Little Reggiana invested in Portuguese superstar Paolo Futre, but a bittersweet debut saw Futre set Reggiana on the way to their first ever Serie A victory, only for a second half injury to put him out for the rest of the season. Lazio's Croatian striker Alan Boxic made an immediate impact following his £7 million move from Marseille. The meanest team in Europe had become even tighter, Desailly's uncompromising approach suiting Milan perfectly. The spectacular attacking performances of last season replaced now by a merciless suffocating defence. And lethal counter-attacks. By December, they were a point clear, but no one was giving up hope, and as Milan travelled to Japan for the World Club Championship, the chasing pack flexed their muscles, including one notable comeback. Gascoigne now. This is Signori. It's going to be an own goal. It's gone in off Jürgen Kohler, the tall Juventus defender. Although the architects is this man here, Beppe Signore. He couldn't add to his tally of six goals he's got this season. But he did enough to cause panic in the Juventus defence. And Dino's off team take the lead. Gascoigne, Boxic and Fouzer all back inside that defensive wall. Watch out for the shot of number 10, Roberto Baggio. 
Here he comes. Oh, it's just hit the frame of the goal. Cola, Fortunato, that's 1-1. One, one. Rivera, the captain of the team. Former Torino sweeper. This is Paul Gascoigne. Nearly every Lazio move has been funneled through him. Vinter. Gascoigne. Diego Fuzer's cross. Alan Boxic's goal. Lazio have reclaimed the lead. Fuzer to take the corner. All the way through to Favale. Oh, Gascoigne's onside. Gascoigne must score. Gascoigne has scored. Gaza's first full game of the season made all the headlines in England. In Italy, though, the big story was the form of Milan's closest challengers, AC Palmer. Quickly thrown out too then by Bellotto. Here's Zola. Palmer on the break. Away from Sanna's tackle, still Zola. Asprilia with a chance, and Asprilia with a goal. Six minutes to half time. And almost from nothing, really. The creative skills of Zola has set up a goal for the Colombian Asprilia. Fiori got a hand to it, but couldn't keep the shot out. Now Moriero, well tucked tackle though by Minotti, and off cut Palmer again. This is where Callery may get caught out. In towards Asprilia, as a test here for Villa. Still Asprilia. Villa sticking with him, but here's Melli, and it's two! Alessandro Melli, a man who feels he has a point to prove and that's his answer to Nevio Scala for leaving him out. Valeri. Now Kripa. Benarivo in support, as he so often is down the flanks. What a mistake has led in Melli! The error was from Sana, and the finish was from Melli, his second goal of the game. And Willie, he has said now, surely to Coach Scala, how dare you leave me out. This is Asprilia. Foul by Furicano. Now, will it be Zola with the kick? This is he, and a goal! Zola strikes again. Another exquisite free kick from Zola. His eighth goal of the season, and Fiori gets a hand to it, but no more. Just three points now separating six clubs at the top and suddenly Milan seemed to be weakening. While Palmer were levelling things at the top, the reigning champions were off being beaten by Sao Paulo in the World Club Championship. Then on their return to Italy, they were probably turfed out of the Coppa Italia by little Piacenza. Were Capello's men beginning to crack? With the Christmas break approaching, it became apparent that Milan weren't the only ones, though, to be feeling the strain. This is Bozo. Dangerous ball in and a chance and a goal! Gambro! His first goal! Gambro, caught in possession though by Benarivo. Another surging run down the flank by him. 
in towards Belly. First time strike, scooped out. That's brilliant. Appeals for penalty and it's given. Here is Brolin with the kick. And Brolin makes it 1-1. One, one. Free kick to Napoli. Actually only five points behind Palmer at the start of play. And he's still the way with it. 1-1. One, one. A chance and a goal! What second? I spoke too soon. But Seco with a dazzling goal. Fantastic goal, Peter. And, and if, if we can see the whole thing, I, I don't know whether we will see the whole thing again. As the free kick's about to be taken, he moves to the ball and then makes a run off the back. Oh, we're not going to see it from this angle. Makes a run off the back of the, the defender. And he loses him. And he, he's it, all of a sudden, he's, in, he's nervous now. But it doesn't take much for Fonseca to... Uh, but we're still not going to see it. But as it comes, there, there's that little run. All the time in the world, but he elects to take it first time. What a finish. Brought in. Wine of him is Gambaro. Napoli not committing too many players forward in this attack, but they had Fonseca in the penalty box. Pecchia and turn. Good effort too! Jonas turn! His first ever goal for Napoli. And maybe now he's put the game beyond the reach of the league leaders, Palmer. Palmer slipping, and the following week they failed to see off relegation candidates Piacenza. Milan, meanwhile, bounced straight back from their cup disappointments with two straight wins. Into 94 and at the halfway stage of the season, Milan were three points clear. And so indeed it went on. In the opening six weeks of the new year, Milan ground out the points in a series of uninspiring but effective performances. Never once did they fall behind, never once did they surrender first place. However, while Milan's title challenge may have lacked excitement, there was plenty to admire elsewhere. So Baggio for one. Calcio's favourite Buddhist began 94 in a state of grace, putting in a series of match-winning performances which celebrated both his European Footballer of the Year award and his status as the world's number one player. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no.
heady stuff. But for Banjo, there was even better to come. He was also voted in as British viewers' first Italian player of the year. And the Divine Ponytail could barely contain his excitement as I breached security at the National Squad training camp to present him with a magnificent piece of paper. Roberto, complimenti. Grazie. Qui consegno questo. Ah, ci ha dedicato la nostra umile presentazione come i migliori giocatori del 93 in Serie A. Devo dire che purtroppo si è arrivato solo il terzo nel, nel premio per il presentatore. Comunque. <laughs> Comunque, tutti questi eh, premi, tutti questi awards di, di tutte le parti del mondo, ormai non c'è più bisogno di, di provarsi, di sentirsi sotto prova? Ma io credo che comunque vada, l'importante è sempre lavorare e riuscire a fare il massimo nelle partite, perché se giochi bene sei considerato, altrimenti eh, non ti viene riconosciuto assolutamente niente. Another player getting rave notices was Paul Gascoigne, back to full fitness at last and setting Syria alight. wasn't the only star of Lazio's surge into 94. Beppe Signori, out injured during the season's opening exchanges, was well and truly back and the most lethal size fives in the business were working overtime. were playing some of the most exciting football in Serie A. The last guard's victory at the San Siro in week 22 cost Inter coach Osvaldo Bagnoli his job. The inevitable price of what was proving to be the most disastrous league campaign in that club's history. Across the city it was situation normal for Milan who after 10 points from 12 were clear at the top. The experts still maintained though that they were due for a fall. Parma had already triumphed against them in the European Super Cup, Milan's third cup upset of the season. Now the reigning champions and league leaders faced four of their closest challenges in a crucial five-week period. Everyone expected them to crack, but Coach Capello was having none of it. Credo campionato ancora lungo si può succedere mm. io penso che il Milan in questo momento sia un Milan molto concentrato che sta, che sta molto bene per cui non sarà facile per nessuno batterci ma poi è la nostra filosofia di non andare a giocare per il pareggio per cui giocare per difenderci non siamo capaci noi dobbiamo giocare come sappiamo con la nostra metà this was the period when the title would be won or lost. Five weeks when that Milan state of mind would face its ultimate test, starting in Rome with Lazio and Paul Gascoigne. Now, Signori. Venisai can stretch Milan at the back. Surely it's Lazio. Fuzer. Now Gascoigne. 
They've certainly begun confidently enough of Lazio. There's Di Matteo, Gascoigne, off a of box hitch, just offside. But only just. Another strong, forceful run till he was upended. He's furious at the tackle. Opportunity this for Lazio, Signori hovering around the ball. Fuzer, we know, is dangerous from long range as well. Gaza not taking any part in this. Maybe still a little winded from his exploits a moment or so ago. Here is Signori to fire it through! And somehow it just grew up wide. Boban. Head off to Papa. Now, Iranio. Off the bar. Masato. Milan on the stroke of half time has snatched the lead. And Rossi has a record. Dino's off's 21 year old record of 903 minutes without conceding a goal goes to Sebastiano Rossi and the rich applause that echoes around the San Siro is all for Sebastiano Rossi he's conceded just five goals in Serie A this season in 23 games and his name replaces that of Dino Zoff in the record books Milan didn't create too much in the opening 45 minutes. But they have a chance here. Oh, and they have a goal! Boban scores for Milan. Boban drives in the free kick. Massaro! That's two! Say no. Kolivanov. Oh, Rossi's been beaten! And would you believe it, Igor Kolivanov, who scored the goal which ended Rossi's run of seven games without conceding a goal at the start of the season, has beaten Rossi again. And so Rossi's new record stands at 929 minutes. Baggio weaving his way into the box. And a cola. No, the flag's up. Flag was up. Well, they were living a dangerous game there, Milan. Bovan will take the free kick. unnoticed in my mind perhaps uh, these are the two best teams in Italy obviously you've got to think about teams like Juventus and Parma but these two are superb teams you've got one team that's got to win that's Sampdoria and the other team haven't got to lose and that's Milan Sacchetti with a long ball and pull it off in search of it he's got Mancini through the middle and here is Mancini and how quickly then he was closed down. Ivani. Well, a frantic start by Sampdoria, which almost caught the land happy. Ferranio's cross, and a goal from Massaro! Such an accurate header by Daniele Massaro and Milan take the lead on 25 minutes in explosive fashion for the man in form, Massaro. 
Six and eight games now. Well, Peter, it, it was a lovely cross from this right wing. There he goes, and he goes. He comes and meets it. He beats Manini to it. It's a lovely header because he's kept it low. He's headed the ball down. Watch it. Gets across Manini. No chance for Paliuka. Here's Galli, who slotted it well alongside Baresi at the back in the absence of Costa Curta. Only six Serie A starts in three seasons for Galli. Now Simone into Boban. It falls for Savicevic. A deflection off Bergami. And Milan take the lead. Savicevic. But I'm sure that will go down as an own goal from the inter captain. Flick on, and Scalacci is 1-1. Scalacci is back. Five minutes to go, and Inter have drawn level. On by Albertini. Back into the path of Massaro. The goal! And Milan have restored their lead. Massaro strikes again. And he continues his outstanding record in recent matches to the utter dismay of Inter, who fought their way back, but now find themselves 2-1 down. And that was certainly deflected as well, not as cruelly as the one off Bergami. But it had Zenka scampering, and he couldn't get there. was pretty much that. Five straight wins and Milan nine points clear with just six games to play. Three weeks later they needed one point against relegation bound Udinese to lift the title once more. Costa Curta with the pass, very rarely gives it away Costa Curta. It's a great turn by Simone and it was just in play too. Simone's cross and the shot from Boba. Baresi who will win a record fifth championship for Milan if and when they do settle it surely they're going to today now and it's Udinese who can change things around Kozminski Jelsi rather, and he's fitted it on well too, and now a chance. And it's an own goal off Costa Curta. Simone! Oh! Fantastic goal! Right out of nothing. Well, we were saying he deserved a goal. And that was a classic strike by Marco Simone. That's why the... left absolutely, well, distraught. One of the goals of the season, Peter, that one. And come Udinese again. And a goal! It's 2-2, Rossito. Laid back by Daisy Denny. <laughs> what makes you think they've settled for the point? That's it, the final whistle to signal yet another Scudetto. Well, she has plenty to smile about and so have Milan. The final score, that's enough for Milan to claim the title yet again. The celebrations went on all night. Everyone had doubted them, but Milan had done it again.
It was a triumph that belonged to the whole squad, but perhaps most of all to Daniele Massaro, the perennial reserve, who this season finally stepped out of the considerable shadows of Jean-Pierre Papin and Marco Van Basten, scoring the goals which won Milan the title. Ho imparato, ho imparato in questi, in questi anni con, con Sacchi e Capello di, di muovermi, di muovermi con, con la squadra, cioè non pensare solo, solo a me stesso, cioè di pensare, eh, di, pensare di muovermi con, con la squadra. Allora quando ti muovi con la squadra in, in sincronia con, con i dieci giocatori che sono, che sono in mezzo al campo, eh, sicuramente ti trovi, ti trovi sempre al posto giusto, al momento giusto. And so the season wound to a close with its usual mix of triumph and tragedy. At Lazio it was tragedy for Paul Gascoigne in the shape of a broken leg and another long layoff. Don't expect to see Gaza back in action until the end of 94. But triumph for his Lazio teammate Beppe Signori, who scored 23 goals in 24 appearances to retain the Cabo Cannonieri title he won last season. At Inter, another bittersweet end to the season, a disastrous league campaign team Bergkamp and Co finished just one place above the relegation zone. The worst championship performance in the history of Inter. But the return of midfield star Nicola Berti, missing for most of the season through injury, inspired him to triumph in the UEFA Cup, a huge consolation. And Inter's all-conquering neighbours made it a unique European double for the city of Milan, with a resounding victory in the Champions Cup. Parma though failed to make it an Italian treble, beaten as they were by Arsenal in the Cup Winners' Cup Final. But Sampdoria will be aiming to avenge that defeat next season. England captain David Platt enjoyed his first domestic triumph in Italy as Sam cruised a victory in the Coppa Italia. They'll be gunning for Arsenal next year. However, Samp will be making that European assault without the inspirational Rude Hullet, who has returned to Milan for 94-95. Another club with Europe on their mind, Napoli. Wrapped by dead, Samp with a makeshift squad, they still managed to grab Italy's final UEFA Cup spot, courtesy of their shy retiring match winner, Paolo Di Canio. However, they'll be going into Europe without miracle working coach Marcello Lippi. He's moved on to Juventus, who are hoping he can deliver the goods again and bring Italy's biggest club their first championship since 1986. Finally, a mention for the club at the bottom. Congratulations to Reggiana, who worked a miracle on the final day of the season, winning at Milan and staying up in Serie A in the process. And commiserations to Piacenza, Udinese, Atalanta and Lecce, all relegated and for Lecce, an unfortunate statistic. They finished the season with the worst record ever in Serie A, 26 defeats in 34 games and just 11 points. They won't see their life again. And that was it for this season, a campaign which proved once again that Serie A boasts the best players, the best football and quite possibly the best team in the world. Yeah, possibly the greatest league in the world, possibly the greatest team in the world. Ooh, sorry, fella, did I miss something there? Only a heck of a story, friend. But say, let me run it by you again. See, there was this team that won the league in 92 and 93 and... Say, don't I know you? Well, my face was once familiar. Aren't you the guy who forgot Ray Wilkins' name live on the air? Uh. Well, back now, in fact, to our commentary team. The second half is about to get underway. Let's rejoin Peter Brackley and Ray, uh, uh, who did...
Thanks, James. And as we await the arrival of the two teams for the second half, a chance to look back with uh, Ray wants his name on the uh, <laughs> on the first half. I think uh, certainly Sam Dorian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, <clears throat> I think it's time I've hidden the road, old timer. I don't want to miss my bus or anything. Like you missed your queue in Naples. <laughs> At least I think he's joking. Do you know? Hello, welcome back to the San Paolo. A bit of a mysterious uh, lack of communication there. But anyway, we're back here now, ready for the second half. The Juventus... Uh, uh, manager, Juventus Could have been a contender. Just one lousy mistake. One? What about Florence? Hey, what about the time outside the church? What were you doing then, fella? Uh. Later then, always wants tickets. The Vatican and St. Paul's, the world's smallest country and the world's biggest cathedral, a centre of pilgrimage for people from all over the world. They come here in their millions to pray forgiveness for their sins. And it's a of all the bars in all the world, he has to walk into mine. 